Hi and welcome to this video for the BTEC Applied Science Level 3, Unit 19. And what we'll be doing here is the walkthrough for Unit 2 of 3 within this unit. So for the criteria, what we've got, we've got two pass criteria. We've got P3 and we've got P4. And we've got one merit, which is M3, and one distinction, which is D2. So I'll start off by picking out the pass criteria for this. Obviously, it's fairly straightforward to see that all of this is the merit and likewise the distinction. So P3 says, demonstrate accurately the concentrations of solutions using the beer lambert law. So basically, what we're going to be looking at, all of this top bit up here is going to be P3. What we need to do as it says, you're going to carry out two experiments, typically here and here are the easiest, but depend upon your course, you may obviously do different ones. Tends to be you would have to have a trip into a university to carry out something like the infrared. Uh, and obviously with this being 2020, that's very unlikely to happen. So you'll probably be doing two more colorimetries in the class, the same as you've done in your first year and also within the first assignment for this. So fairly straightforward again, what we are going to need are some graphs of concentration against absorbance, have your points plotted, reading off the absorbance and down and stating the unknown concentration there. So you'll have to do that twice. As it says, follow experimental methods, process results by plotting the graph and use those to determine your unknown concentration when you read off. So P3, two colorimetry. Plus the graphs with the unknown. Now P4. Describe the key features of a range of spectra of unknown compounds to determine the identity of these compounds. So that is this bit down here. Now, first off, the infrared part of it. So as it says, combined spectra, unlikely to be able to do for just the past bit the combined spectra comes in with the higher up merit and distinction there so we've got percentage elemental composition and determine the molecular formula simply put you're going to do a couple of calculations or empirical plus molecular. Then we are going to be looking at some infrared spec with these various peaks and the functional groups as we can see listed in there. So what we'll be doing is we'll be given multiple infrared specs, so probably six or seven of them, and you'll be told six or seven functional groups. And it's simply a case of matching up the spec to that functional group. Now, what we need to do, however, make sure you're not just sort of saying, Spectra 1 is an alcohol, 2 is an alkene, 3 is a carboxylic acid. Without any justification for that, you probably won't achieve the pass criteria then. What you need to say is something like, um, Spectra 3 is a carboxylic acid. I know this because there are two peaks shown. One of them is around 1700, a sharp peak there, which gives me an idea that I've got a carbon double bond oxygen within there. And I've got a big, broad peak around 2,800, which indicates the OH bond within a carboxylic acid. And obviously, you would do that for each of the six or seven spectra there. So it's fairly quick to get that done. You're just going to be using the back of the data sheet and matching them up. 
And then the other bit, you are going to be given some proton and carbon-13 spectra. And again, you'll be shown four molecules, if I remember right. And it's a case of matching the four molecules to their four respective spectra. So it's going to be something like you would be showing, for example, this. And what we would be stating things like, yeah, we've got two carbon environments. And we've got only one proton environment. And what I should be doing then is therefore looking for which of my four spectra agree with those. But then I can go a little bit further because it may be that two of the spectra have got the two environments for carbon and one environment for the proton there. So I'll need to look at chemical shifts and splitting as well. So what I can say is that the proton is just going to be a singlet. And if I can find a data table, it's going to be roughly in the 2.1 to 2.6 range. And likewise, I can grab a data table and say for the carbon-13 spectra, this one here is going to be around 190 to 220, since it's a ketone. And down here would be around the 20 to 50 range. So if I do have two spectra that agree with these, then I should be able to differentiate out the spectra based on the splitting of the proton and the chemical shift of them both, and therefore give it justification and say uh, molecule X is spectra 2, whereas molecule Y is spectra Z because, and again, just bring this into it. So that's the pass criteria, P3, very quick to do, P4, a little bit of thought, but not too much really, since it's just a case of you're more or less given the answers, and it's matching them up and justifying them. Now on to the higher grades, the merit and distinction. These overlap a fair bit. What you'll be, do, be given is multiple combined spectra. So you'll be given an infrared, a mass spec, a proton NMR and a carbon-13 NMR, and you'll simply be asked to work out what the molecule actually is. Now, for the merit bit, elucidate just means work out. So more or less just get the end answer. If you just do that, you're unlikely to get a credit. It will need some explanation about it. So, for example, you can say the structure is this because there are three carbon-13 peaks, two proton NMR peaks, blah, blah, spitting, chemical shift, etc. talking about it as well. So a little bit of justification for the molecule that you've actually worked out based on what's in these four spectra that would be given to you. Now, if your written work isn't of the best, if it's unclear, then what your teacher can do is sit down and discuss this with you. Now, that's usually at the point that students panic a lot if they've just copied their friend and don't really have a clue what they're talking about. And it becomes very obvious at this point, and I've marked students down if they're unable to even justify their own work. So please make sure you understand what you're actually writing. Now, for the distinction, it's more or less the merit done better. So a full written analysis, again, work out the structure of the two compounds based on the four spectra actually given to you. But it's got this key difference within it. It will justify whether the conclusions they have reached are likely to be completely correct or whether there are justifiable other options for the compounds. So the key things you usually see with this are where we've got Uh, something like this with the, the ester group typically, where we can uh, 
turn it around essentially, we've still got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four carbon environments. We've still got one, two, three protons, one, two, three proton environments. So we need to be able to somehow differentiate between these and justify which one is correct based on something else within the spectra. So what you should be looking at here is maybe splitting. Does that give it away? If not, what about chemical shift? Would that give it away which of these two is correct? So the distinction, chances are, from the two compounds that you're looking at, there will be an option within there for which it could be. The merit, you may not have spotted this. You've just jumped straight to the answer. But the distinction, you should have spotted it and therefore be able to justify which of these two is correct. Thank you.